like Morello Nomicon or Zonia's in their recent patches. Still very, very strong. Flex break in the top and mid lane, so understandable ban to come through. Yeah, now 10 seconds or so for Legacy's final ban here in our last game of the evening. And Legacy again, looking for some points. I wonder what they'll want to pick off. You don't have too much longer to try and decide what they do want here. A couple of picks, we could see Rumble maybe banned up, but no, it is a different top lane ban. Maokai going to be the last pick there. So you have to think with that ban, they're looking to snap away the Scion to have the advantage in terms of the unkillable top lane tanks, but Scion's been perma banned by teams like Rich Gang and other teams. I'd be surprised to see it through, but there's a couple of priority picks still available in the champion pool. So this last ban, it's shrouded in secrecy a little bit. I'm not sure what they're going to target. Yeah, I mean, Rich Gang, uh, we've talked about them a lot in the early stages. We're a very decisive team in the draft. And Jarvan, actually, the last band there. So a jungle band being picked away. And like you said, Papa, instant Sion pick up here by Legacy. I guess what this means is that potentially Huey can get an advantageous jungle matchup. Because in terms of the top jungle pool, there's only a few champions. If, there if we don't see the Nidalee, this champion pool, there's only really Vi available. That's a real top, top tier jungler. And a lot of junglers were hit by the, uh, the jungle changes in 5.4, so potentially trying to pick up the Vi, but they give away the Scion. The Scion's been syn synonymous with victory so far in the OPL. I mean, Lee Sin is available as well, so that could also come through, but I mean, Vi would be a strong choice. It's very good currently. It's very strong. We saw the neutral control. So good at locking down key carries here. We're taking up a lot of options here, but Legacy, like you mentioned, has started off strong with the first pick Scion. Vi is being hovered. I have to expect this would be the lock in. I like to see the Sivir coming through from Rich Gang. When they were at their, their best in the early games of the season, in the OCS, it was their early rotational play that was the hallmark of that. And Two picks to really solidify the potential for level six power spikes coming through from Rich Gang. Yeah, and they're not afraid to take it to Legacy here as well. And as they're going to go through their next few picks now as well, plenty of options open here. We've seen a lot of Morgana actually recently on support. T Gun, of course, playing it today already to a victory, and I believe a loss as well, two games today on that particular champion, but plenty of options open. It's also the ideal answer to a Vi. Of course, the best answer to Assault and Batteries is to have that ability to ensure that after the, even though the damage goes through, the CC effect doesn't, so able to escape uh, the Siva. She has the Spell Shield. Between the Spell Shield and the Black Shield, it's going to be very, very safe. Sorry, this is against, of course. I've completely lost my train of thought, but... Uh, with the Spell Shield, going to have at least one option to get away. And I think Carbon might not have listened to you there, Papa. Not going to take one of the standard junglers here. No least in this time. It's going to be Rengar back with the carry pants being put back on here by Carbon. And looks like Support Morgana probably there for region. And it's good to have CC in the lane. So, of course, the Dark Binding, one of the best setup tools for the bowler. If you have strong CC in lanes, and of course, Sion, if he does one thing, is provide a lot of CC in lane. The very reliable point-and-click CC coming through also from Morgana. If this Rengar gets going, maybe that will once again be the carry performance coming through from Carbon. Yeah, and I mean, again, I, I do get it a little bit. He has to make up some damage maybe from the top side because Sion, again, very tanky, good CC, but not really good on the damage front. I believe that Vitamir has been locked in already. It might have been. We'll, we'll give Rich Gang a little bit more time, but that would be an interesting pick, and I'm curious if it is Vlad, where do they want to put it? Well, Chenny Boy didn't pick it himself, so you'd have to think at least now they're going to try a Vladimir versus Scion matchup. This is what, kind of what excited me, is when we see these first pick Scions, Scion can provide fight pressure in lane, but kill pressure, not so much. Of course, with a ganking jungle like Rengar, anything's possible. But it looks like they're going to try something different with a Vladimir versus Scion top lane. I've seen a little bit of Vlad as well already in the OPL. Jana is the pick there for support, so going to take out one of the best supports in the league here down towards the bottom side. But I think you're right. I think that's Rich Homie's Vlad. Interesting. I do like the matchup just because, again, not a lot of kill pressure and the ability to pull through all of his CC, even through his ultimate. You'd have to cancel that ultimate early, and I believe the duration of the Sanguine pull is enough that there's no way you'd be able to have the CC effect come in from, from Scion. I do like the choice. It's a very interesting matchup. And now, of course, the Jarvan ban makes so much more sense. One of the best ways to deal with a Vladimir is just put him in the Cataclysm. Can't pull away from that ability. But banned away. All right, we'll see as well. That could be very interesting if, depending on how that lane develops here. But Rich Gang, maybe a bit of a flex pick there for their last one. And Legacy going to look to complete their draft now as well. So 15 seconds left. Not a whole lot here. And I wonder what Tally's going to play. That's probably the big question here for this comp because it's very open. He, he looked out of place on the cork. He definitely doesn't uh, seem to support his short range aggressive style. Goes for a very aggressive hyper carry. And Jinx, and look at that. The victor's even coming to the OPL. All right, so Choo Choo's, we almost, you know, poked at him, so he played something a bit more aggressive. Victor 
a very interesting champion here. We've seen a little bit of it internationally. It's starting to pick up speed. And Choo Choo's, I believe, was hovered by a team in the last series there with Chase vs. Legacy, and he's going to take it into the mid lane. I believe it was just today that in the EU LCS that we've seen the blind pick Victors. I didn't expect that. There's some lane matchups that sound very difficult, but we've seen Victors in competitive play even beat Xerath, which sounds like a tough matchup for him to wade through that magic damage. The blind pick Victor is the call. I'd be interested to see what the answer is from Rich Game. I mean, I don't know if Victor necessarily wins his lands, but he's surprisingly safe because he's got good range on the E. So I like the big up here. I actually quite like it in this team comp as well. We talk a lot about Sion being a good initiator and needing some CC. Victor actually very good at following up on those sort of initiations. Kind of the worry to me, though, is that Victor's easy to lock down. You want to lock down that Victor, and who better to lock down someone than Vi? You've got the black shield, but you're going to have to be very on point in your timings, or one of Jinx and uh, Victor are going to be eating the brunt of that cooldown. Yeah, and the last pick for Rich Gang, Chenny Boy Zed actually there for the mid lane. So going to take into a matchup that we haven't seen too often. I really like the Zed against Victor because, again, he doesn't like people getting on top of him. He doesn't like people gap closing. Of course, that's what Zed does. He does have a lot of kill pressure against Victor. That's why we see the summoner spell choice at least being mulled over now, moving from the Ghost Flash to the Ghost Exhaust. Just have a bit of trading power because Ch Chenny Boy, if he can get a significant advantage in the mid lane and start split pushing, okay, he has to deal with the Scion, but he has significant kill pressure on two short range hyper damage carries in Victor and Jinx. Yeah, just a good assassin there to round out the comp, which does mean that the Vladimir you thought we'd see in the top lane is here. So let's go through the matches a little bit here. How do we feel about Vladimir versus Sion? I don't see how Sion can really pressure Vlad out of lane, even though he does do quite high burst damage, specifically with the roar that consistently comes out, clears waves, and it's very deceptively hard to dodge. Has a very fast missile speed. I just don't see how he can force Vlad out of lane, specifically when the you know the first, for example, the Hextech Revolver comes in and has so much sustain in the top lane. With Jarvan Ban, he's going to be very escapable. Goes for the Flash Teleport. I actually would have liked to see Rich Homie commit for, say, the Ghost Flash and just go for split pushing mode, okay? You don't have the ability to teleport into a fight, but Vladimir doesn't really offer any CC. Of course, does offer the damage uh, amp with the ultimate, the Hema Plague. But again, in terms of split pushing, I expect Vlad to be very annoying in this lane. Of course, Sion's going to get unkillable, so it's going to be very hard for him to even have kill pressure. But the Vi of Vladimir, especially early, if they both combine at level 6, potentially can take down even the super tank Sion. Yeah, I actually kind of like it. I like that you mentioned that ult there. Kind of cute synergy coming through for Deathmark Hemo Plague. So we could see people explode in this matchup, especially the very squishy but very powerful carries in the mid and bottom lanes there for Legacy. So a lot going on here in this matchup. Let's move back to the mid lane here. Victor versus Egg. We talked about it a little bit, but this is, again, something we rarely ever get to see. Exactly. This is a definitely a new matchup in competitive. Victor does struggle with people with gap close. And, of course, Zed may be the most effective assassin on this patch with apologies to LeBlanc, for example. It's a very good matchup. It, it does vary their damage types quite significantly here. So, of course, the exhaust pickup is smart from Choo Choo's just so he can hope to dissuade the Deathmark all-ins. Of course, the Deathmark significantly shorter cooldown than the exhaust does. But he just wants to survive this lane and push wave. So once he picks up the first augment, the E augment, and gets the extra wave clear, perhaps he's going to be able to push the wave in enough to dissuade Zed from all inning. And the Zed has one issue, because of course, when we talk about Zed, we talk about, all right, split pushing. In the late game, you can split push happily. A, we've seen targeted nurse, so of course, less attack speed means it's more difficult for a Zed to side split push down turrets, and he scales worse with attack speed because of his base attack speed changes. But more importantly, he's not going to do any damage to a Scion. No, and that's the thing. Like, you can push all day, stay safe against Carter, but he's not leaving the top lane, and he's got plenty of good AoE wave clear as well, so maybe they'll have to draw him away, look for another lane. I imagine that Zed, if he does want to go the split push route, will just avoid Sion at all costs, but I guess he might have an answer there, and again, they've got a lot of aggressive options here. Carbon especially, it almost feels like they don't need a third threat on this team, but they have one. Absolutely. They have the Rengar, who, if he gets going, we, we see you know people kind of disagree in terms of items. We see very aggressive item builds, you know, Brutalizer, upon Brutalizer. We see a more tankier. I have to expect it's going to be somewhere in the middle, maybe a second damage item into Pure Tank, just to have a bit of threat in the middle of a fight. But Shenny Boy, one thing you can say is not a lot of lockdown CC coming through from the Legacy team. Of course, there's the Dark Binding and to some degree the Soul Shackles, but Soul Shackles not that useful against Shenny Boy's all, all his, uh, sh his shadow play that he can potentially put out in a fight. And, and just continuing, like there's no other real lockdown CC bar in the dark lane. So if he can avoid that cooldown, Teamfight Zed could be a very realistic proposition for Rich Gang. Yeah, and it's just a matter of, you know, can they get these lands going? Which jungler is going to impact these lands? Vi and Rengar, a little bit of a more farm-heavy style junglers do like to get their ultimates first if they can afford it. Curious about the bottom line matchup. We've seen this quite a lot once Sivir picked up on popularity. It's Jinx versus Sivir again. Yeah, Jinx is kind of solidified as, as the popular counterpick against Sivir, just because, again... 
because of Sivir's short range, when she auto attacks, say, even the melee minions, she sits in her own minion wave, in her ranged minions. That's just how it works when you have 500 range. And you, you move to that rocket form on the Jinx. When you hit a rocket on Sivir, you're going to hit Sivir, but you're also going to AoE onto the creep, so you're going to be able to push and harass with the same amount of mana. So it's such efficient trading that once the BF sword comes into the equation, once you start having AoE wave clear and a few rockets, this Sivir doesn't have a lot of options. You can really bully around her short range as you get more and more points in your rockets and get more and more range yourself. And unlike maybe one of the other popular matchups there for the bottom side, Corky, that's actually a very good matchup for Sivir because, of course, you can spell shield the fast bomb and it costs a lot of mana. Jinx with the rockets, I don't know if you can spell shield the AoE, but... It's pretty easy for Jinx anyway. It's an auto attack, so I don't believe you can. No, it's why Draven is a popular pick against Sivir is that you can't sh you can't uh, spell shield those those axes. You can't spell shield auto attacks. No, you can't. We are into our last game for the evening. Is all Legacy versus Rich Gang. Legacy after they lost to Chiefs, gonna see if they can pick themselves up and try and get a win here for the last game of the night. Rich Gang, of course, also looking for wins. Did get one, I guess, by default with the forfeits of Fauna in the last uh, day of play, but they would love a big win here, especially against a team like Legacy. And understand against a jungle like Rengar who wants to power farm to six. You want to get as many aggressive wards as possible to make his jungle path that much more predictable. So Carbon aggressi aggressively invading himself. We see Rich Homie is the only man defending the territory. He has to respect the CC. They know he's already skilled Q. He does not have the ability to pull. Yeah, really nice jump there from Carbon actually. Rich Homie not going to get baited though in towards the brush that Ejim has already set up shopping. But uh, Rich Gang also counter invaded on their own. Did get two good deep wards down to Legacy's red side jungle. So both sides, in fact, Rich Gang going to have the better level one warding. You have to think Rich Gang are looking for a 1v1. Just because, again, the matchup of Vlad versus Sun is very healthy for Vlad. They've got put a lot of resources into setting up the success of this Vlad pick between the Jarvan and Ban. And they obviously were happy to give away the Sion with this counter pick. The last time we saw a true counter pick, it was the Vladimir versus LeBlanc matchup, which did not go the way of Kensti and Avant. So we'll have to watch closely and see if Vladimir can really stand toe-to-toe -to -toe against the undead monster in the top lane. Yeah, pretty interesting looking through the minimap as well as Card. Just hanging out, trying to get some vision. He's already in towards the top side. Legacy's bottom lane are there as well. For a while, Rich King's bottom lane were actually sitting in the middle of the lane, maybe thinking Legacy would try and lane swap on them, but we are going to break out into standard lanes here. And again, not the matchup I expected to see tonight. What is Kadra doing, by the way? He's doing the red buff on his own. We talk about early camps for Sion. This is not the one we expect to see. This is a very big camp for him to start. I'm not actually familiar with this. I have to assume, I, th I believe I've seen it in Solgus. I think it must be possible. And look at him DPS it down. They're stealing away some raptors. They're doing your own raptors and they're stealing away creeps from your jungler. And there's uh, clearing the enemy rep off. Yeah, and that's a pretty insane. That should mean a three buff here potentially. In fact, Carbon is walking to the enemy jungle now to try and see if he can get some work done over there. And uh, wants to poke back here down the bottom. You can see Italian needs him just to uh, hang out. Carbon on the minimap that does have to back away, but we'll go to his own blue buff here. And Squiggle gets caught by a binding. Tallywacker going to come in for some good early damage there. And the pool's going to follow an Egypt going. It's actually already level two. Squiggle has to back off. The Ignite comes in. The last rocket moves through. And Squiggle's going to go down for first blood. Now Fence Boy going to get caught there as well. And what a start for Legacy. Very late application of the Ignite, but that was just not respecting the level two power spike coming through from Jinx Morgana. The double. CC, I believe, snared for about 3.25 seconds between the Dark Binding and the Chompers. I mean, Squiggle, he's not known as an AD carry main. Of course, he played top lane for Rich Gang in earlier weeks. Just did not respect the Jinx Morgana lane and paid for it with his life. Yeah, and such smart play there from Tallywacker as well. Soon as the Binding hit, basically walked into melee range with his minigun, and you can't out DPS the Jinx in that situation. And we didn't even talk about this, but Rich Homie started with an amplifying term. So of course he wants the Hextech Revolver as fast as possible, but he does not have that much regen in lane. He's just relying on his Q and the one pot. He's already used his potion now. He's dealing with a red buff Scion. Scion actually does surprisingly high early damage. If he can hit his roll, you know, if he can especially balance that roar between the minions and the and, and the enemy enemy champion he can do a lot of harass so rich homie He's gone all in on farming up enough gold for the Hextech Revolver, but who knows if he's going to be able to. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. He's actually keeping up fairly well in CS so far. Just one behind as the rest of the wave moves in towards Kadra. So Sion being annoying, but right now not too bad. And the big story here, we talked about Carbon maybe putting on a carry performance. He has just destroyed Huey's jungle in the early levels. I mean, it's not just Carbon, though. It's Legacy as a team with Kadra in that counter jungle on the enemy red. Huey used a lot of time to walk over his red buff to confirm the fact that it was stolen. He's significantly behind in experience right now. He's doing competitively. He's about half a level behind, but... Uh 
It looks like a lot of people are interested around the mid lane. Yeah, Carbon's actually doing a lot of early pressure here, whether it's walking towards the enemy jungle or just trying to set up ganks here. Choo Choo's going to move in. Chenny Boy does use the shadow. Now Choo Choo's going to move in. A good death ray. Now the bowler coming in, but a great tree. You have a Chenny Boy. Good damage coming in, though, and that will force him to flash away. Yeah, the bowler goes wide to stop the kill from being confirmed. Eachum's actually caught in transition, taking a lot of damage from Huey. Yeah, Misty's binding actually there as well. Huey kind of walked past the bowler. Going to come through. Chenny Boy, though, going to look in the brush. He's going to give Carbon a good lead there, but Huey going to flash in. Choo Choo's so, trying to get in for a kill. Carbon trying to get out, but Squiggle actually gets the next kill. Gravity Field down there is going to stun up too. The Binding follows in as well, but a bit too aggressive there for Legacy. Yeah, Chuchu is flashed in for the Q auto. Thought it would be enough damage to kill Chenny Boy, but he lived on about 80 health. Just healthy enough. Of course, started the long swords. Had three potions. Had potions right in the whole time. It was a game of inches. It's a very risky dragon, but it looks like they're going to get it. Yes, yeah, surprisingly, Legacy do not want to defend. Edim doesn't have that much health, but uh, Talarak has got two Doran's Blade and full health of mana, but not interested in contesting 2v4, and Rich can pick up a very quick dragon. It's actually a very strange position from Talarak. He held back almost like he was looking for a call to either contest or back away. Was kind of caught between both. Isn't able to push the wave in fast enough to deny any CS from Siva, and Legacy, to be honest, lose the maximum from that pick. Yeah, and a bit of indecision there, you have to think, from the bottom side of the map there by Legacy. I mean, the mistake to get themselves killed in the 3v3, bad enough already, but that was a... Uh yeah, just a split call there from Tallywacker, and like you said, he loses everything. Yeah, he's not even able to deny. I mean, okay, it's only three, maybe two million minions, but it's something. You always have to look to trade the maximum. That's what Legacy have been known for in a lot of their games with this assa aggressive assassin play and rotational play. But in the top lane, Rich Homie, he's got his Hextech Revolver. He's against the Silence. It's probably going to be just fine. Yeah, I think we're going to have a pretty big farm fest here in the top side. Rich Homie actually pushing aggressively now as well with his Vlad Kadrid. No slouch on the AWE Wave crew himself, but Vladimir, especially as he gets more levels in the Tides of Blood, going to be just... Totally comfortable in the top side. Tides of Blood. The usage of that ability definitely separates the good Vladimir players from the excellent ones. If you can keep it up to four stacks when you're entering a team fight, you can wreck people with the Hema Plague and a couple of rotations of the the spells, particularly the Tides of Blood. A lot of AoE damage coming through. But in terms of wave clear, it's going to do just fine against the sign -up. Yeah, we saw Choo Choo's there in the mid side as well, just poking back and forth there, doing a little bit of early damage. Is maxing the death ray there for any aspiring Victor players out there. He is picking up popularity now as well. And Jenny Boy, though, looking fine. They're actually basically even on CS in the mid. It's just a very competitive mid lane. We don't see the Hex, tech, hex Core upgrade coming through yet. You have to think... The, the massively popular E Aftershock upgrade will come out first, but just the double Dorans and just working towards that thousand gold investment. Yeah, probably once that death ray augmented there as a first one, but we will see. Does have a couple choices there. Ejim actually going to look to land a Barney, but a great spell shield there from Squiggle. They're also going to move in, take out the pink ward as well. And Tallywacker had, what, maybe 15, 20 CS lead. That's shrinking now as Squiggle and Fence Boy are able to fight back in the bottom lane. He does have a significant combat set advantage with the Doran Blade against just the boots coming through from Siva. Of course, Siva having a bit of extra move speed might stop some of the favorable trading we described earlier with the, uh, the, the AoE rocket damage coming through. But Squiggle... He doesn't want a 1v1 this Jinx, especially not right now. Yeah, Fence Boy there as well. Actually, body blocked a zap there to prevent Talarak from picking up a melee minion. So, very cute stuff there from the Janna. He's sitting happily on some potions, so doesn't mind taking 150 damage trades just to keep the CS values down for Squiggle. Yeah, keep him a bit more even. Tally and Ejim pushing in a bit aggressively here, but again with the double Dorans, Tally really wants this lane to go in Jinx's favor, like it's sort of naturally supposed to anyway. So, a little surprised they didn't at least try and contest for that dragon and Legacy. Bottom lane at least going to have to try and keep up this lead in the bottom lane and really keep Squiggle Sivered down. Yeah, you can see Rich Homie in the top lane. Just on the minimap, you can see how aggressively he's able to position against Kaju. Kaju's used all his mana trying to wave clear. You know, he hasn't been able to auto attack at all because he's eating so much harass from Rich Homie. So in terms of the top lane matchup, it's kind of as we predicted. On paper, Vlad looked like an excellent laning matchup against Kaju Sion, and that's how it's transpired. Yeah, I mean, Vladimir does take a little while to get going, but Hextech done here, level 7 for Rich Homie. Going to keep pushing in. now. was almost level 8 actually as Kadrid's forced to use his TP. Everything going right for the Vladimir. And look, he's not growing a big CS advantage, but he's definitely a hyper carry in terms of damages, Vladimir. And of course, double scales gets extra health from his ability power purchases. But so for him to be even or competitive is a big enough advantage for Rich Gang. And you have to mention that if he's able to keep Sion anchored under turret, it's so much extra room for Huey to get aggressive, get into the enemy jungle, look for a pick in either the Rengar or onto the Victor, and I expect some really aggressive players to come through from Vi in the next few minutes. Yeah, and Huey actually farming up. Does have level 6 now, so can look for the first gank. Carbon as well, also level 6. Rich Homie, going to take a bit of damage. And actually, the top side is where both jungles are going to look here. 
Okay, so we do actually see the jungler's gonna meet, but actually the double invade coming through from Chuchu, so following Carbon, but spotted out by a pink wallet. It does have the death rate augmented up now as well, so ready to go as far as that goes, but Chenny Boy got a Vampiric Scepter plus his Brutalizer, so looking fine on the Zed as well, and Legacy, they've got some KLTs, what can they do with them now? And we can see that the quick ultimate, so the quick roam is coming through from Chuchu's. We might see an out at number 3v2 in the top. Oh, good ult there, but Carbon actually face checks a Vault Breaker. Looks like Sion's gonna dive in towards the top. Huey in trouble, actually. Chuchu's so much burst with the victor. Rich Homie almost gets locked up there as well, and Cardrid is gonna take the turret. Flashes forward there. Rich Homie actually gets the kill with the Hemo Plague on to Carbon, but the double kill comes in for Chuchu's. Chenny Boy now gonna dive in. Doesn't even need the ulti, and that's two for two. And yeah, the first move from Huey was aggressive onto the Rengar, and he instantly had to backpack. Did not respect the roam coming through from Choo Choo's. But with the counter roam from Chenny Boy, two for two. So very even trade across the board. Yeah, I mean, Choo Choo's tried to get ahead. Does have two kills now. We'll pick up the Sork Shoes for his trouble to go along with his Augment plus the Double Dorans. But Chenny Boy, a very smart follow and gets the trade kill that he deserves. And Carbon, zero, two, and one. Now we have to mention... Nowhere near completing this Warrior Enchantment just yet. About 750 gold away from completing that item. Rengar can definitely go through an Identity Crisis if he can't either get enough damage to be one-shotting people or get tanky enough to be a frontliner. And it looks like that power spike to be significantly delayed for Legacy. Yeah, we can see in the bottom side here as we do look, Tallywacker still ahead in CS, keeping it at least above 10 right now. BF sword up for both, and we talked about it. That's just a much bigger power spike for Jinx. Yeah, just once you have points in that queue, once you can change into the rain form and just power down the minions in a couple of auto attacks, you just can't look to tra trade a Sivir unless you have ganking pressure unless you have perhaps the Vi coming and flanking from the back but in terms of just stand-up trades Squiggle's doing a good job holding the wave at this present point but they're just kind of waiting both sides are just kind of waiting for a bit of gank pressure well it's not Vi but it's Chenny Boy this time around actually coming through for Rich Gang they might try a tower dive here potentially Chenny Boy does actually walk over the pink ward so we'll take that out that will foil the gank you have to think here as EGM this gets a little bit of gold they're coming through good Duke of the Dark Binding that comes out and Dragon is back and ready to go Rich Gang might just be here first yeah Rich Gang are the first to rotate they have the first dragon we remember teleport is not up for Kajit either the rich homie does have teleport available does not look like Legacy will be able to compete for this objective. No, and that'll be two straight dragons in a row for Rich Gang. The first one, just a bit of a uh, out position there from Legacy there and moving into a quick dragon. And Rich Gang get the second. We've talked about it a lot in previous Rich Gang games when they were ahead, but they look best when they're controlling the dragon objective. And the difference between their victories and losses historically has been that dragon control. We put the stat up on the board a few weeks ago that in victories they were near 100% dragon control. And look, they're 100%, they're 2 for 2 so far, but we're only 12 minutes into the game. Yeah, I mean, so far so good is actually in the top lane. Kadrid fighting Rich Homie. Chuchu's has come back here, and Vladimir can't do a whole lot here. We'll go into the Sanguine pool, but Chuchu's just blows him up with the Q. And you mentioned earlier, what do we see from a Victor in team fights? It's, it's definitely not what I expected. The rotational play is not normally the stand by for Victor players, but in team fights he'll have a lot of AoE wombo damage, but if he shows up behind you, he has CC, he has good burst damage. You can see just the power of this Victor pick. Yeah, actually, Huey down the bottom, Talibak are going to get ulted, the Black Shield might keep him safe, Carbon is going to dive back in, Squiggle though, going to get the first kill, gets low and eats him, can't actually kill him, the shield comes through for Jana there as well, Carbon does pick up Huey and Squiggle is still alive somehow, Chenderbo actually dies solo in the mid lane though, and Squiggle still running there, Egypt nails, nails him with a binding in 3-1 overall, with Taliwaka the only casualty for Legacy. Exactly what Carbon needed. We talked about how he was smarting a bit. I was 0-2, but picking up that kill on the turret after the failed turret dive from Huey and Chenny Boy dying in transition against Victor. That's actually note. That was Ch Choo Choo's being able to 1v1 a Zed without Exhaust available. Exhaust just came available after that trade came through. You're already seeing the burst damage that Victor's able to put up with just really the Sorcerer's Shoes and a little bit of AP. And suddenly things go from pretty good to, to a bit worrying for Rich Gang. Yeah, and that's sort of the thing about Victor being so unique having that hex core. He just gets AP almost quicker than any other mid laner. Yeah, he gets three AP per level normally. There's no, there's no ultimates available. Rich Gang trying to be up. I tell a lot. Yeah, Deathmark is going to come in, but Carbon might try and save him. Going to move in. That's a great biting there for Rich and Chuchu's not dead yet. Huey actually Q's back into Carbon, and they both survive. A great roam there by Legacy. Very good focus fire coming through from Legacy. They pick up the kill. Again, Chenny Boy goes aggressive 
aggressive. Again, he gets punished. Rich Gang, they're trying to rotate and do some turret damage. They should be able to pick up this turret. Yep, they are going to get this one here. Rich Homie with a good roam from the top side into the mid. So Rich, uh, Rich Gang sorry, will get their first turret of the game. And it's an important one in the mid turret here. But Squiggle actually has to be so careful. Ejim moving in, doesn't throw the binding with the spell sheet available. But Infinity Edge almost complete for Jinx. That's a second massive spike that's going to come in for Tallywacker. Yeah, you, know, you have to note that these kills are coming through from Legacy and Trades even with the likes of Fence Boy roaming. They just, the roams are not coming through from Rich Gang. The laning phase is actually looking really good. We were mentioning just how far ahead Rich Homie was in terms of lane. He actually loses his turret first in the matchup against Sion. Yeah, I mean, Kadra just able to apply enough pressure. The roam to mid to secure that tower did actually cost him there. So two for one now up in turrets coming in. Carbon actually back down to the bottom. Does not have his ulti, but he could sneak into a brush. Yeah, all Rich Gang can really show for their early 15-minute pressure is the two dragons, which could prove significant if they can pull this game along. They're starting to answer turrets. Okay, they're 2-1 behind. They're not, not on massive gold. It's only 3,500. You just have to worry that if they start to get pressure across the map, if Victor's able to 1v1... Uh, Chenny Boy and Silence able to outpush Rich Homie. I don't know if they have the map pressure to really get to that late game stage. I mean, you just talk about Vladimir. If there's any late game carry on the Rich Gang side, you have to say it's Vladimir. Oh, absolutely. But you mentioned Choose already. 5 1 and 0 just casually there on the Victor with the Amarela Nomicon already done as well. So, so much damage coming in. Carbon has snuck into this bottom brush as well. In fact, Choo Choo's also coming for the ride. And yeah, Choo Choo's is also in position. So. Looking pretty good for Legacy, and that's the on the hunt, uh, through the hunt pop. Yes, yeah, Squiggle actually forced to use his ulti now, so there's the on the hunt being moved in. Carbon popped his ulti, thrill of the hunt coming in, and now Huey going to get locked up by the bowlers. Ult comes in, Tallywhacker just destroys Huey. My eyes go so wide as the burst damage comes through. Chenny Boy, he tries to be in position for a rotation, dies as well. That super mega death rocket did so much damage. Yeah, did an unbelievable amount of damage there. 6 1 and 1 for Truth as he gets another kill onto Chenny Boy Z in transition effectively. He's casually 1800 gold ahead of Chenny Boy already. After what he said was going to be a tough Lenny matchup for him, the 1v1 kill in transition was a preview for just how strong Truth is. Yeah, I mean, we haven't paid that much attention to the mid side. Truth has actually been roaming fairly significantly in this game as well, but whatever he's doing, it's working out here because he is just destroying this, this game. This is the item build we commonly see from Victor players in the little we send The teleport's in from Rich Homie. Yeah, they're going to try and make it happen. Rich Homie is in the mix there. Choo Choo's going to tank it all up and Cartridge down here now as all the rockets coming in. There's the first kill for Choo Choo's. Going to make it two for the double there for Victor. Cartridge going to chase in, maybe try and find Squiggle. Vi going to move back there as well. And Cartridge yeah, just going to walk out. The crucial factor for Legacy is that Tallywacker has not been able to go back to shop. Has 2,100 gold. Doesn't even have the Infinity Edge complete. If there were Infinity Edge AoE crits coming out, this fight would definitely be clean up central for Legacy. Even though they have full health Cartridge, they need to back away and find a time for Tallywacker to shop before this third dragon. Yeah, dragon back in 45 seconds. Legacy will clean out the pink ward that Rich Gang are put in there. The Scuttle Crab actually going to get aggressed on here as well, but no junglers around to smite it. Actually, Chenny Boy going to finish it off, so a good timing on the crab there for Rich Gang. They're going to look for their third straight dragon. You can see Chenny Boy wants to stop any backs, just doesn't manage to catch the Morgana. At that point, Legacy was sitting on about 6,000 gold, which is effectively the gold lead. They weren't able to shop. They were low in terms of mana, but they go back and pick up some massive items. Berserker Greaves, an extra dagger, and the Infinity Edge completed for Talioweka. Now he's damage relevant. And look at this Victor. He's already got his second upgrade. I have to imagine that's the Q upgrade. I'll find out when I mouse over to him in a moment, but... That is a massive victor. Uh, Choo Choo's here. 8 1 1. Massive might be an understatement here at this point of the game. Dragon is back alive, and Legacy would love a first one. It's going to be difficult, though. We see the black shield on Choo Choo's, oh, and uh, Choo -choo. we saw a Fence Boy at some point. Well, he was there for a moment, but Choo Choo's with all the damage just destroys him. Doesn't even actually did use the ulti, excuse me, so did get the burst down there. Carbon actually going to move in now as well. Has popped his ulti, going to find Chenny Boy. Great bowler there as well. Ejim follows in with a binding and a well deserved kill for the support. And a nice burst of damage coming through from Carbon. It is the second Brutalizer. He's stacking the Brutalizer. So much armor penetration coming through. Legacy get their first dragon. Bit scary how much damage they were doing without the 6% AD and AP, but it's suddenly going to be oh so much more sweeter. Yeah, Fence Boy, very scared for his life at this point, especially if he meets the victory here again. We've got Frozen Hearts on for Cardred in the top side as well, so he's building up very tanky with those two items coming through. We talk about the... Uh 
the big aggression from Carbon. Interested to see where he goes. Looks like a giant spell probably coming in for a Warmox there with the Ruby Crystal. And even Ejim having a strong game here at 306. A luxury age just already done for him. And you might wonder why Carbon's going for this more aggressive build, needing to be a frontline for double hyper carry. When you've got Scion in the top, he's already got Frozen Heart and Spirit Vision. So we're talking basically 40% CDR completed. I'll tab over. It's going to be at least 37.5% 37 CDR already completed for Kajud. He is the only tank his team needs, and it frees Carbon up, at least for the early game, just to stack a bit of damage. Yeah, we've, you've seen there before as well. Carbon's Rengar mechanics are on point. He is so good at leaping on top of people and bowling them. It's a, a pretty tight window, but it's basically a guaranteed snare if you're trained up enough on Carbon. He's definitely a Rengar player, but Chenny Boy going to face check. Choo-Choo's two-level difference here. Choo-Choo's going to move in the death mark, comes through, but he just rips! Through poor Jenny Boy. He is going to die to the Hemo Plague. Choo Choo's can't quite get enough of a shield from his Q, but Tallywacker has got the next kill onto Rich Homie already. That's two for one there. Legacy will take it. And only Vision stops the Get Excited from Tallywacker, really making a big impact on Rich Game. They are able to disengage the fight. It's a one for two trade. Not ideal for Rich Game, but it could have been a lot worse. Tallywacker already riding with double buffs. Yeah, he, with the double buffs, could have really ripped through them. So Rich Gang will be thankful for... The kills that they did see there. Now, Legacy going to look for a push, but can't quite get in there. Science still pushing towards the top side as well. So a big wave will crash into that side there as well as Carter. He's going to do a bit of counter jungling on his, of his own. So Legacy can't quite get a, more objectives here with the death time as being so low, but continuing to get advantages in this game. Legacy still need to fight smartly. They still need Carter at the front of the fight, tanking up all the aggro because Carbon, he can jump in, do a nice burst of damage, get the double bowler in, for example. Then he needs to back away. He doesn't have the tanky stats. He's working towards the Yomu's Ghost Blade. He's going to be effective at split pushing, of course, and he can pop the throw of the hunt and rotate to team fight. So he does have decent split pushing options. In terms of a true 1v1, He's, he's able to get to the back line, but he definitely doesn't have the tanky stats anywhere near so that Kadra is able to. No, and as you said, Simon is at this point at least the sole tank here for the team. And Ghost played a very aggressive choice here for Carbon. Sort of, you know, some of the sort of indicative of some of the performances we've seen from him recently on different champions. And we talked about aggression. Choo Choo has been doing his homework. He has a very fast Fura enchantment for those Sork boots. This is definitely the build we saw when Raphael was breaking out in the LPL. He went for a very similar build. The one thing I like with the Fura boots is that when you, you when you pop that Q, you already get a burst of movement speed from the Q upgrade, but you move from about 380 move speed to about 550 instantly. Okay, it dissuades, but Victor's a champion who, again, he doesn't like people gap closing on top of him. He has consistent damage, but he doesn't have the mobility to use it. With the Fura enchantment and the and the Q upgrade, you can move around fights and do so much consistent damage for what was previously considered a burst mage. Yeah, I mean. You, uh, quite short ranged as well, apart from the E of the Death Mark. I guess your old Chaos Storm has decent range, but I mean, again, it just gives you the mobility that you really want to get around team fights. Because, like you said, as far as consistent DPS goes, Victor's quite high on the list. Yeah, I mean, you, Victor was kind of like binarily looked at as like, okay, if I face check him, he might explode me. If it's a team fight and they stack AoEs, his ult might wreck me. But the ability to do consistent damage, as you mentioned, overcoming that short range to reposition, reapply your shield, and get the mobility from it. It's just a new side to Victor that we really didn't know existed until the last few weeks. No, and ulti actually popped there by Squiggle, I believe, as well. Oh, maybe, actually, maybe still has I think it might be going off, but Rich Gang are looking to defend their turret here, and Legacy are just not letting up any of this pressure. And there's no ability to side push any minions. Of course, Rich Homie wants to be side pushing. He's on the Vladimir. Of course, has instant wave lift. He's able to keep the tides of blood up, but uh, he's got the Zonia, so he is team fight ready. He was only sitting on a... Seeker's arm guard not a moment ago, so a big purchase coming through. But Rich Gang really aren't in a position to commit to a fight, but they might have to. Now they bought the ulti there for Squiggle. Rich Homie going in there. Talibak, he's going to flash out of the way. Carter trying to peel off, but Chenny Boy actually gets the kill to run to Jinx. Huey diving into the back lines, but Choo Choo's gets the kill. Carbon though, getting low. It's so squishy on the ring, oh but Choo Choo's going off in this fight. There's the double. It might be more kills. Well, Choo Choo's not relenting. Oh. Triple kill there coming through. It's the death throw moves in. Egypt flash binding in to try and make it the quadra. Choo Choo's can't find the next kill. Chenny Boy though, could could be the victim. Choo going to chase him from Chenny Boy. Should be okay with the shadows, but I think your groans confirmed it. That was disgusting, Victor play. Yeah, Kajit had to back away. Of course, he had to respect the passive coming through from Chenny Boy. Potentially some kill pressure on him. But you're correct. I had to groan because the damage coming through from Choo Choo's. That Chaos Storm literally AoE'd down. 
80% of three people's health. They picked up the three exit kills. This Victor, 12, 2, and 4. We're going to see from the replay. So they get the instant kill on Taliweka. It's the it's the Hemo Plague into, again, the percentage damage from the... But look at the Hemo... Look at the, the Chaos. It's just disgusting damage coming through. And he's just able to... You can't kite him. He's able to cue a minion to pick up 550 movement speed to get in position to hit the Death Ray. Short, deceptively short range on all his abilities, but the flexibility to just cue a minion, clue an enemy, cue a tank, and just move at 550 movement speed to hit your abilities, that's the difference in the Victor players, that you get in positions to use your spells off cooldown. Yeah, and it makes sense why the Fury Enchant's been so popular on the Victor that we have seen, and Choo Choo's returns now with a needlessly large rod as well. Richie are trying to set something up. A good scrying orb will spot them out, though. Also, Talibak has picked up his second damage, and I've got a fan of Dancer here, so plenty of damage early on in this game, and Dragon back up soon. Legacy going to look for another fight. And Huey, he's kind of split between two items because his team is crying out to high heavens for an Aegis, but he kind of needs the random ones if they're expecting to be ultimating onto Taliwaka or just expecting to take a lot of auto attacks from Taliwaka. But this is the issue when you have fed carries in the AD carry and mid roll, is that you have to split focus. The Aegis is what moves away and wait for the Chaos. Oh, stop. the Dragon does actually go to Rich Homie in the back doing a lot of damage actually. Ejim does pop his ulti but the Zonis gets popped through and Chuchu runs away with a Fader A death rain does so much where Carbon trying to assassinate somebody and Huey getting low there. Carbon actually going to get the first kill there as Kaldred is going to dive back in. Chenny Boy looking for someone actually snipes Egypt there with the Q, but now going to death mark on the Chujus who just wrecks him there with the Chaos Storm. We don't even know how much damage he overkilled the Zed with there, but it had to have been massive. He doesn't even have the Zonia, so he needed to use the AoE ultimate when he might have wanted to hold it for three or four members like the previous fight, but Chuchu's he, he backed away so quickly you might have thought he wasn't confident. No, it was just buying time. Yeah, just, you know, using the mobility, kiting around there. Kaldred actually getting very aggressive. Does get the knock up onto Rich Homie. A good spell shield from Squiggle will keep him safe for now, but Kaldred continuing to clear waves. Jinx gonna do the same as Legacy rotate in towards the top side of the map. Chuchu's will join them as well. Rich King gonna lose another turret. And look, we talk about the hyper carry nature of Jinx, but of course, sometimes we forget. You leave a turret open to it just with minigun and a bit of attack speed and hell, a lot of attack speed from the Phantom Dancer. She rips through turrets. They're gonna back, sitting on a nice thousand plus gold on four members barring the poor support, Ejim, just with 500. The purchases will come through and you have to think they'll set up for Baron before long. I mean, Ejim can't be too upset. He does already have a locket of the Iron Solari complete, so doing just fine here with the global gold from his team. Choo Choo's gonna go back. I wonder what he's going for. I assume the death cap is very close to being finished. He just has enough gold. It's gonna be the Zonius. It's a smarter choice. Of course, there is assassination potential from Chenny Boy. It gives him another person who can walk into a side lane and deal with the Zed split push. And those are words that we haven't said this game, barring during champion set, is the Zed split push. Just because Chenny Boy, he's been forced to group. There's no way he can split push against Sion, who's had teleport up more often than not. And Chenny Boy, he's just been reduced to team fight Zed. And if it doesn't work out, you can see the score kind of supports it. Just limited in the fight compared to Chuju's just ripping through multiple members. I mean, you mentioned split push. At least Rich Homie, as we saw in the bottom lane, he is actually able to push reasonably well on the Vlag with the Tides of Blood. Looking good, looking for maybe a Rylos or even a Void Stuff there for his third item. He's actually not too bad. I like the Distortion upgrade there as well. But the issue is, we already talked about it, Legacy is just too far ahead in gold. Yeah, but you commit to a fight, you know, you use any of your gap codes on anyone other than Chuchu's, he's just going to kill you the moment that you jump in. His EQ is doing 80% of everyone's health. There's no Aegis, there's no magic resistance whatsoever across the Rich Gang lineup. And look, they, they needed to modify their builds to respect Chuchu's, but of course, then of course, uh, Taliwaka will rip through you. So there's no good options in terms of itemization and Carbon's going in. Yeah, jumps on Squiggle here, does. I believe get the first ball of spell shoot at a good cue there for Fence Boy. We'll keep Carbon back there, but Rich Homie could be in trouble. Carter actually going to chase him down. Taliwaka looking into the Hemu play, pops in a good double knock up there coming through. Rich Homie trying to get the kill. Taliwaka actually saving his QSS still could have dropped Hemu play, but didn't want to there. And now Rich Homie trying to cut around. Chenny Boy going to go back in. Good shadow play. They get to the ultimate. Taliwaka cleans him out with his rocket. Now Rich Homie going to be the next to fall as well. And Choo Choo's hanging out somewhere on the left of the fight, but didn't need him. Taliwaka with the double. Choo Choo's got into the backline, but was exhausted at precisely the right moment by Fence Boy. So the instant kill didn't come through in the back line. Not enough damage to take down Taliwaka. Super Mega Death Rocket does heavy lifting, and they look like they have no answer barring a miracle st steal from Huey, who's powering to try and get in range of this Baron. Doesn't have his ulti or a flash. He's going to have to queue in. Possibly a bit blind. There is actually a ward in the back there. Look at the boys. damage rip through the Baron. Uh, it's going down very quickly. Huey not even going to get in range to entertain the idea of a steal. Legacy going to clean out the ward just as a bit of an afterthought there, and so far ahead in gold now. Yeah, I mean, it's just disgusting. 14,000 gold. We've seen some one-sided games today, but Legacy 
It's the victor, Big. It's nice to see something different from Choo Choo's. We weren't convinced by his Ezreal, another new champion, because, hey, it didn't have the pick pressure. You could face check an Ezreal and think, all right, I might live from this. If you face check this victor, even a two-man, a 1v2 situation, Victor's probably going to come out on top. And look, maybe this game notwithstanding, Victor not a classic assassin in League of sure. Legends, but... Ch Looks just, like one. He certainly does in this game, but Chuchu's is just playing with so much more aggression in this game compared to the last one. You just have to wonder where this Chuchu's goes against top opposition. They still have another match against Direwolves. I hope this is the Chuchu's we're going to see there. Maybe he's hiding it for playoffs. Maybe they're confident that they can get the work done in playoffs, be the clutch team and the clutch player they know they can be, but during the regular season against those top teams. This is not the Chuchus we've seen. No, but this game just on fire right now with Victor and it, lighting people on fire as well with the death ray. Just so much damage already. We've already seen it. No one in Rich Gang can afford to check this Victor. And Carbon, he's repeating Rex side performance right now. Split pushing at the side. He knows he has the throw of the hunt to get into the fight. Could even pop the Yoma's Ghost Blade. But he's spit pushing happily, trying to pick up a bit of CS. Hasn't opened up a massive advantage over Vi, but still putting on pressure from the jungle. It's what he likes to do. Yeah, Baron Minions helping out there as well. So now the rest of Legacy will rotate and EGM position very aggressively. Just throws a binding towards you. He dares him to come forward. Chomper's going to zone out Rich Homie as well. And Legacy have broken the base now. Yeah, Rich getting to be so much faster with their rotations, but they're going in. Carbon goes straight in there, and that just blows up poor Huey's Vi. Now Jenny Boy gets creeped by Talawak and almost drops. To 30% health. Now Kaldrin going to move in the back. Rich Homie forced to ball and Chuchu's just going to line up another one. The crit there almost killing two there. The rocket goes in. A great zone is from Rich Homie. Keeps him safe. But well, that might be all she wrote here for them. A great map awareness from Rich Homie. So he lives through the super mega death rocket. But Kaldrin happy to tank up this inner turret. They need to rotate faster because look at how fast Taliwaka rips through turrets and... and uh, Structures like they're nothing. Yeah, Jinx just so good at snowballing structures specifically. Whenever she's able to free hit with that minigun, she just destroys them. And we see right now Rich Gang base left in tatters as two inhibitors fall down. Dragon coming back up again. It would be Legacy's third, even if they needed at this point. And Chenny Boy gets caught by Egypt and Tally does pop the death mark, but he is dead. Yeah, the QSS already completed, so no real kill pressure coming on to Tallywacker unless he ordered four or five times and really DPS down that Jinx. Rich Gang are hungry for kills though. They're going in. Yeah, they are going to move in, but Kadrid says no there and stamps down the teleport. Huey going to move back in here. Chuchu's not here, but Legacy more than happy to entertain a 4v4. Tallybucker getting so aggressive with the black shield on him. Squiggle going to get very low here as well. Kadrid gets the first kill on defense point. Now Huey going to be in trouble as Tallywacker will try and take him out. Carbon actually diving onto Squiggle towards the side there as well. Just gets destroyed by the Rengar. Tally still chasing Rich Gang Huey there as well and Vi got nowhere good to go. Can the criminal finally get the officer? Chuchu's though might have the last say on that one and yeah. does he actually misses quite comically the e but not going to juke out that ultimate picks up the kill we still have two members alive for rich gang so maybe they won't be able to close out the game just yet but you know the dragon at minimum is going to fall yeah they'll take that instead it would be their third now as well we'll just make all of these rotations that much easier and legacy are closing in an almost a 20,000 gold lead at 32 minutes well, realistically they can take this game whenever they want it's the third dragon answering the first two dragons that rich gang got in the first 11 minutes of the game no baron to pick up a super tank so they can tank up any structures they want just get your minion waves in order and finish the game legacy and look credit to rich game they played actually again a very solid early game they've consistently played strong against the top teams and i like that they're not afraid but what went wrong here for rich gang in the mid game i mean there was that spectacular turret dive down bottom when we saw huey ultimate in the counter gate coming through from carbon carbon was i believe zero and three at the time so it was massive for him to pick up a kill and snowball his warrior and if you're going to go DPS Rengar, he, he clearly is with the BF sword that he's added upon for a bit of aplomb and exclamation mark. You need to get snowballing. It was that snowball, but you can't forget that during that fight with Exhaust down, Choo Choo was able to kill Chenny Boy in rotation. And this has been completely irrelevant Zed play as Kadrid wants to initiate, but uh, don't know if his team's going to be in position to get any kills. Yeah, initiate straight into the rocks there, but Carbon going to chase and look at his own initiation and legacy. Burning ultimates left, right, and center, but I don't think they really care at this point. And Choo Choo's, he's going big here on the victor. Actually, it's a sheen now for a possible Lich Bane if we get there. I mean, Lich Bane makes a lot of sense. You have to overextend to get that auto attack after you throw out the shield. 
just to get the massive amount of burst damage. It's backloaded on the auto attack. And with Lich Bane, I mean, he was already deleting people. It's just going to be hilarity if he finishes that item. Yeah, zones him off the turrets as well. That leaves Tallywack. It's time to finish it. Shanny Boy gets crit in the back and just destroyed there. And Legacy going to take out the last inhibitor, and that should be game. It should be game. We see them pushing through. They've got super minions pushing for multiple waves. They want some exit kills, but Le Legacy, they're going to get a bit of... Uh, bit of confidence back with a win here. Yeah, a good win here against Risky. Expected to come in strong, and this was very strong by Legacy here. 20,000 gold ahead by the end of it. 34-minute game, it looks like it's going to be Tallywacker padding the stats there with a double kill now on the Jinx. Really wants a couple more kills. Cardred almost ulties into the fountain, but instead the, Le the Nexus will explode, and Legacy another very convincing win. It's not the revenge against Chiefs they were looking for when the day started, but it, look, they pick up a bit of momentum. They take down a team they should be beating. They need to start beating those teams above them. That's kind of the thing that's eluded Legacy so far. They'll look to their calendar and see that Direwolves game as the one they really need to mark down and prepare for. But this was a consummate performance from Legacy as they take down a rich game team that, excluding that walkover, of course, is 0-5. and five. Yeah, it just looked fantastic. And, you know, let's watch it again here. We'll have a replay from that last game. Let's just see how much damage Legacy got done. So they're 8k ahead at this point. They're looking very good. It's the victor, of course, that we're going to have to watch since he was doing so many massive things this game. We'll roll the tape. So Tallywacker's fairly low range AD but can burst down turrets. That's why Rich Gang, they know that he's going to be positioned aggressive. That's why they go aggressive and Chenny Boy able to you know, double magic damage, so double percentage damage down instantly. But wait for the Victor Chaos Storm that comes through with the grouping. Instantly kills one. DPS is down a second. And the Q onto the minion is the real advanced Victor play to pick up the 550 move speed. Gets him in move for the E. And Legacy... And Victor in particular, Chutris has picked up that champion very fast, taken nods from the LPL and other Victors, and used it very effectively here today in the OPL. Yeah, Cardred actually threw a minion towards Chutri as well. I don't know if that was intentional, but if he needed something to kill one, he even had Cardred helping him out, which was just adorable. And with that, Legacy pick up another one. So let's check in with the results of the day here and see who's still looking strong and who's maybe not here. So we're going to go through just the results here. And Chiefs still undefeated somehow in the OPL. A win there against the immunity, and of course they win against Legacy. And the, the rich, the the chiefs, the rich gang, and the other games, they pick up. The, I am picked up the win against them. And rich gang, they couldn't find a victory in the last game. Legacy taking them down. Rich gang, kind of entrenched in the bottom half of the map now, and Legacy trying to keep in touching distance to the Direwolves and Chiefs. Yeah, so we'll retain a spot, I believe, in the top three there as well, but Direwolves still looking good. Chiefs almost miles ahead of everyone else at this point, and for them, maybe the only question is, can we actually go 14-0? To go undefeated in a split, even a fairly short one like the OPL would just be insane. And you have to feel like only Avant, the 2014 regional champions, hold a realistic chance of stopping this Chiefs lineup from going 14-0. They've gotten through Direwolves twice. They've gotten through, today, Legacy twice. It's only four teams between them and that 14-0 miracle fairy tale season. Yeah, we're coming close to the end of the season. But unfortunately, I have to remind you, we do have a week off tomorrow. So the OPL will not be on next week due to IM Katowice. So that'll be on as well. Make sure to check it out, of course. But no OPL. We'll be back with you in about, I think, seven to ten days. So we not can, too long. And you can still refresh yourself with the schedule, with all the information at oce.lolesports.com. You know, with a week off, plenty of time. Just go there, check the standings, wait for that schedule to come back. The OPL, it's going away, but it'll be back before too long. And you know what? Maybe just go back and check those sick Victor players. That was insane stuff from Choo Choo's to round out the day. But with that, we are done. It's been a great day of OPL. We will, of course, have a break, so we won't see you then, but we will be back for LPL tomorrow. And, of course, go watch I Am Katowice while we're away. But we'll see you in a couple, in a week or so's time. For now, we are done.